I have some exciting news before I jump into today's video, and that is that I have officially relaunched my Patreon. You can now go and join my Patreon. There is some amazing new features on there. And when you join my Patreon, you will get access to my exclusive sex positive community. Over there, I am adding tons of content that you won't find here on YouTube and you won't find it anywhere else on the internet from me. I'm doing audio content, sexual details, deep dives, going really deep into topics that I talk about here in videos, but I can't go into enough depth on YouTube because YouTube censors me and most of my videos are quite short. There are some really great deep dives over on my Patreon now about things like masturbation addiction, whether or not you can get desensitized from a vibrator. And also I do have some saucy thirst traps over there as well. I'm showing off some of my lingerie hauls of lingerie that I get sent. Also on top of all of that, I've added a feature that so many of you have been asking for, which is direct access to me. So when you join one of the higher tiers on my Patreon, you will actually get access to ask me your sex questions every single month and I will personally answer them for you in detail. There's even a feature where you can video chat directly with me. So if you've always wanted to be able to open up more of a personal dialogue with me because I unfortunately just don't have the time to answer everyone's sex questions, then join my Patreon because you will be guaranteed exclusive access to do that with me. And when you join my Patreon, because there is a, a small fee and you can do it from just $2 a month, by the way, what you will also be doing most importantly is supporting me to be a full time creator because the only way I'm able to keep putting out free sex education content is getting paid. And so sometimes that means putting ads on these videos. So I want to obviously move away from having to have so many ads on my videos in order to be able to monetize what I do and instead have my own community on Patreon where you guys can help support this channel to stay alive. And by supporting me, you'll not only be supporting this channel for me to keep making content and paying a video editor, but you'll also be supporting me to help get some new projects off the ground, like the expenses of launching a podcast and a blog and all of the other things that I've been working on. So please do go and check it out. Please go and join. Like I say, you can do so for as little as $2 a month and it will make a huge difference to my ability to keep bringing you free, approachable, accessible, LGBTQIA friendly sex content. Guys, gals, non-binary people, you're getting yourself in the mood. Don't want to be really curling them like this. Let me start that again. <laughs> Can I get anything wrong? I'm in my slippers, so I'm, oh, <laughs> I'm like, no one can see my feed, so, you know. Welcome, Sam. I have to say this is the first time I've had a male escort in my house. I mean, do you refer to yourself as a male escort? Uh, yeah, usually I do have to put in the straight male escort as well, just to... You've got to put the word straight in yeah. there. Yes, okay, That because that was, that was also going to be one of my... Oh God, one of my questions. I have so many questions here. I don't know where to begin. So how do you become skilled at this? How do you become a professional at this? I mean, dare I say this, not that I am aware of no, uh, like school that you can go to, to like learn to be a male escort. So without sounding disrespectful, what makes you such so professional at sex? What makes you any better than just like some average dude walking down the street? Like sex is just about pleasure and I get a lot of pleasure giving pleasure. And then I guess it's just been experience. And I guess mostly if I, if I meet with someone new, everything starts very slow and gentle. And then I kind of follow their ways of communication, either verbal, breath, body language, that sort of thing. And you kind of can see what's where to go and work with that. A understanding of female anatomy makes a huge difference. And where did you get this knowledge from? Because, you know, I've talked before in my column about the fact that they did a, a survey over in the UK, quite broad. They asked thousands of people to identify like and locate like where is the vagina, where is the clitoris, what is the actual function of these parts of the vulva. And it was something like roughly 50% of men and women actually couldn't actually accurately locate and identify what the exact function of the vagina and the clitoris was. So how did you learn about this stuff? Uh, so a few years ago, I was working in a sex shop and uh, part of our job was to submit a 
800 word blog post about different aspects of sexuality etc and I was kind of like uh, I think I'd seen something about what a clitoris actually looks like including the internal parts and I was like oh and I went into that and then kind of was looking at the G spot and squirting and all that sort of thing. Um, so you just went away and essentially did like a lot of reading and study. Yeah, I mean, since then, and especially since being more into those kind of sex positive social media accounts, and the information seems a lot more accessible these days. And Do you find that you often teach women about their own bodies when you are with clients? Yeah, so a pretty common thing is what is it that you're doing and please don't stop doing that thing and I'm like, it's, it's your g-spot how have you not women have the most exciting anatomy down there like there's so much variation and this i saw in lockdown you know everyone's just like yeah I've just you know been masturbating for 12 hours straight and i'd be like if i did that it would just be this red skinned probably fall off yeah bleeding crippled thing that's going to make it hard for me to walk for a few days like like working in the sex shop you know, for the guys, there's basically fleshlight strokers. And for the women, there's thousands and thousands of yeah. products and for all different shapes. Men really and... need to step up their game because sex toys, let me tell you, they're giving you guys a run for your money. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have really anywhere else to go except for porn. And so I think a lot of men are using porn to fill in the gaps left behind by sex education. And sex education leaves behind quite a lot of huge gaping voids in terms of gap would be an understatement porn tells men that you take your clothes off you whip out a hard cock and a woman is ready to go like just about the shortest bookings i ever get are four hours because that's a short booking is four hours yeah but it's not four hours of like there's maybe an hour hour and a half of intimacy wow because i spoke with uh my my good close friend sienna who is also an escort like yourself she's a female escort and her main clientele are straight men her typical booking is one hour because that's the minimum that she will allow she doesn't do less than an hour and she usually says it's 10 minutes of sex and then 50 minutes of her talking to them afterwards yeah so you're saying yours is basically flipped there's always that need to have that initial connection i think it's so interesting because i think a lot of men listening right now would just really not be aware of the power of actually really seeing and hearing their female partner. The hearing part is probably the most important one there. You can have all the cunnilingus skills in the world, you can do all the role play, book all the fancy hotels, do all the expensive dinners out, buy um, you know, flowers, but if you if a woman is not feeling seen and heard, that is that is very hard then for a woman to be aroused.